Okay, let's take a look at the barn I've been working on for the Alohas. So this space is roughly 20 by 30. It's an all open huge space. So I used uh, cedar fence pickets on the front wall with chicken wire at the top. I will replace that chicken wire with windows and I have to come through here yet and cut some two by fours for batten strips to um, seal, block off the cracks. Problem is, when I first put this up two days ago, it was tight, no light, and of course, when this cedar, this wet cedar is exposed to the air, it shrinks a little bit, so we have gaps. So I've got to correct those. I put in a roosting bar, just one for now. I know I'll need at least two more, and I'll probably put an A-frame on the other side of these rollout nesting boxes. I'll put it in the middle here. Now, I believe I never showed the back of this building when I did my walkthrough. So, you'll notice a lot of patches. Ideally, I would have re just pulled down that tin, replaced the tin, repurposed what was cut uh, for garden beds, raised garden beds, but as expensive as everything is right now, I'm just patching, including somewhere in the past, this has pulled away a little bit here. Uh, so instead of trying to push the whole building back to this other building, uh, I just put a patch there. I will put wire up there along that eight inch area uh, to keep birds from flying down in. For now, eventually the barn will be taken apart, new tin for the broken uh, slice sections, uh, and then this pushed back and secured instead of nails with screws to the old oak beams in the other section. So one of the things I did, um, I have a rolling barn door that I made, and I also did a stall door on the inside so that when I open up that door, chickens just can't run out if I'm not putting them out in their runs and I can push them out of the way and then push this door closed behind me so no one escapes. So there's Lily and there's Skye. She's got to go visit the chickens. Um, so here's the door. It worked. That's just pressure treated two by fours and the pressure treated cedar lumber. Uh, and it ended up being extremely heavy. So let's walk around to the back side. I still have some patching to do right here. <coughs> but the uh, it's got chicken wire on the inside, so it'll do now. So what I've done is taking sheets that were blown off and pieces of tin and just cut it. I have no idea why they took an angle grinder to the tin wall like they did. It made no sense. So maybe it was kids. So all I've done is patch yes, and used a piece of mismatched and then patch this corner. Uh, eventually I will get when I redo it, I will actually put proper corner pieces on. And I need to get gutters on it. And collect the water. So actually, if I wanted smaller pens, there is quite a bit of room behind this barn, these two barns. 
or the barn in the, the previous loafing shed to make runs, but it's too close to the woods. And I have been catching a raccoon every once in a while on the trail cam. So once this is all done, it's done enough. This section, which is about almost 500 feet, no, not 200 feet, 250 feet, half that distance, 500, um, is where the next line of coops will go, and then the runs this way. I played around with an idea since it's wide enough. I put it in a 20-foot wide building there and having stalls sharing a common back wall and runs on either side. It all depends on costs. I've been watching auctions, so if I can get an uh, RV barn kit at an auction for dirt cheap, that'll go up. I'll split it, put walls around it, and then runs on either side. Otherwise, I will start building coops. That way. So that barn in the distance there is the only one that I have left to fix the roof. I fixed the garage roof. I fixed this barn loafing shed roof. Uh, that roof was the only one not damaged. I've had to fix the roof on those two barns and the siding. Uh, that little outhouse there. The roof was okay. It needs to be, it's nailed, so I want to re-screw it. Because I'm not using it as an outhouse. We have two bathrooms, indoor plumbing. Uh, but I'm going to use it as a tool shed. Hang all my garden tools in it. Because for this year, it's hard to see with the grass so high. The garden is going to go over there this year. Over through here. And then I've got the fruit trees. So that's eventually going to be a fruit and berry orchard over there. Some raised beds from that section, that 100 feet coming this way. And then the garden next year uh, will be on the other side of the driveway in this one acre side field. That starts from that post and goes all the way to behind the brooder barn. That's about an acre. So that's where the garden's eventually going to go. But that'll be next year's project. First. I've got too many projects moving into an old farmhouse that needed renovation, and so did the buildings. Uh, but it's getting there. So that's what I've been doing this week. And as you can hear, the rooster is not very happy. Um, he has... Four girls now, uh, the one Aloha rooster, but he's not happy because he knows there's girls on the other side and he wants more. Not that he would actually cover them, but he wants them. I could say typical male, but that uh, really is not being nice to the male species of everyone. But it's typical for the roosters. The more girls they have, the manlier they think they are. All right, so this is a long view. See those trees way over there? That's the other edge of the property. Way over there on the other side of the winter wheat. Uh, and you might not be able to see it, but the wind is blowing through the wheat like waves. Uh, it's very nice. We've had some rain for the past two days. Sprinkles the first day. Solid penetrating rain of one and a quarter inches yesterday and it's sprinkling again today uh, that's it i gotta go move chickens the rest of the alohas there's like 120 130 i'll count them exactly uh, to put into that section so they can grow up and i'm going to sign off now